Hello, as you know, do you know I've spoke to Eckhart Tolle and he made some incredible points that I'd like to unpack further. For example, his uh, insights on race, otherness and ego are interesting. Here's what he had to say on that subject, all those rather complexly interwoven subjects. For example, uh, let's say in the case of race, let's say there's a person who is... Look how much I'm concentrating. What an adorable little guy whose ego, ego is to a large extent defined by the, their, their race. Uh, now, whether it's black or white or yellow or what it may be, so that, but that is only possible because a certain segment of the people around you are of a different race. Then you can define your ego through identification with that. And the ego seeks enemies, Implied in that is also that it seeks superiority. So it feels it needs to find some, it needs to tell itself that it's superior to somebody else. I suppose this point is helpful and interesting because Eckhart Tolle clearly believes that whatever identity we have externally, whether that's on the basis of our race, sex, gender, class, nationality, it is in some way attached to our individual or egoic identity. He mentions elsewhere that it's good to honour your identity. But what I understand from Eckhart Tolle is that our primary identity is transcendent of cultural forms of identification or anatomical forms of identification or superficial forms of identification. The reason I find that appealing, I won't pick this thing on my leg, I've just seen something on my leg that I feel like could be interesting to get into. The reason that I think that this is important is because what is the solution to all of this oppositionism at the moment or all of this um, polemicism, all of these social challenges that we're facing I suppose one answer is to recognise that we're the same as one another, ultimately we're the same as one another, that while there are cultural differences, individual differences, social differences, that the most, in the most important way, and I would imagine in Eckhart Tolle's language that would mean through our awareness, the phenomena of our awareness, we are the same and we can choose to amplify or minimise the significance of these differences. We've become, I think, infatuated by difference, infatuated by competition. And I think Eckhart Tolle is being careful to say that if someone has fought hard for the right to identify in a particular way, then that's something that should be respected. But that all subjugation, competition and exploitation starts on the basis that another person is inferior, that you are superior or indeed that you are different. I wonder if we can find a way of operating on another bandwidth, another three frequency altogether, somehow beyond, above and free from these ideas of competition. I believe it's possible. You know, when Neil deGrasse Tyson talks about like we're only 2% different from chimpanzees, it's not difficult to imagine the 2% more evolved creature than a, a human ape, and that that creature wouldn't absentmindedly squeeze this leg thing, and also wouldn't bother to seek out differences, would seek out harmony, would recognise that we are in harmonic connection with one another and the planet that we live on. Just, not just race, that's only one example. There are many other ways in which the ego does that, it can, when a person who is totally in the grip of the ego cannot meet you when you talk to this person or you come together. So I suppose also what Eckhart Tolle is saying is that racism or any kind of, um, I don't know, xenophobia or fetishization of difference is a is coming in some way from the ego and is merely just one expression of the problems of overly identifying with your egoic form. Now, to take that a bit closer to home, making it a bit more personal, I still like think of myself, I still categorise myself as a male, I'm aware of Englishness, 
I like have different ways of identifying I care about my appearance and my body but because of people like Eckhart Tolle and it's not saying that like you know like oh you shouldn't care that you're a male or that you're English or take or indeed to not take care of your body but I think what I am beginning to learn is that these things are secondary to something such as love or compassion and kindness if we could agree culturally that we want to be loving, kind and compassionate to one another and respect other people's identity, I feel that this would facilitate progress in a way that the continued obsession with difference and opposition, I, I don't think that can ever bring about resolution. This person sees you through an image that he or she uh, arises in their egoic mind that they have created for you and they cre very quickly they create an image. They cannot relate to you. They relate to their own mental image of you. And that's a terrible thing to do to a human being. What you're actually doing is you're imposing an identity on the other and see the other through this fiction of an identity. And so you're never meeting that human being at all. You're only meeting the constructs of your mind. Perhaps that's applicable way beyond broad social topics such as race and nationalism. Perhaps even the people in our own lives, our most personal and intimate relationships are being reconfigured in our own mind. How much do you take time to see the people that you love, to see your partner, to see your friends, to see your family and your children for who they are, not the image that we project unconsciously on them, the small tip of the iceberg that we experience the theory of panpsychism that I talked about in the podcast this week with Philip Goff suggests that consciousness is a fundamental component of the universe, not evolved from material. It answers many of the great problems of, phy of physics and chemistry and philosophy to, to contemplate this, um, this theory. What it also does is suggests a, an abiding oneness, a kind of consciousness in all things, a sentient, not necessarily a sentience, but a kind of a, a dignity and biology that's worthy of love in all things, rather than, I suppose, an attitude and perspective of utility. This person is useful to me in this way. This tree is useful to me in this way. It's worth checking out that podcast. It's also worth considering how spirituality, as described by Eckhart Tolle here, is far more likely to present us with solutions to our current problems than any of the rather, I would say, a sats limited and shallow political solutions that are being presented by um, within mainstream politics.